This afternoon at 2.45 in St. John's Harbor, Terry Fox dipped his foot into the waters of the Atlantic Ocean. When Terry Fox was 18 years old, doctors discovered cancer in his right leg. It would change his life and change Canada forever. And one morning I woke up and I couldn't get out of bed. That day they told me I had a malignant tumor and that I had to have my leg amputated in four days. And I decided after my year and a half of chemotherapy that I'd try and run across Canada and raise as much money as I could. When he first started the run across Canada at the age of 21, almost no one noticed. He ran alone, 42 kilometers a day, a full marathon on one leg every day of the week. He endured every type of weather in Newfoundland. There was rain, sleet, and snow. Because he was running westward, Terry was often running directly into the wind. Terry loved the early morning, so he would often get up at 4 a.m. anyways and start running and get a few miles in, stop for breakfast, and then he would finish the rest of his miles off. His best friend, Doug Allward, trailed in a van behind him. He ran from Newfoundland towards his hometown of Vancouver, where he planned to finish the run and pour water he collected from the Atlantic into the Pacific, symbolically uniting our country. The prosthetic that Terry had was actually a walking leg. Back in the 1980s, people didn't run on prosthetic legs. Running on his prosthetic leg was incredibly painful for Terry. His stump would chafe and bleed. I don't know how to normal technique. I have to take an extra off my real leg in order to have time for my artificial leg to come through. He set many goals for himself, and he had to work incredibly hard to achieve them. When I'm running each day, I take one day at a time. When I'm running, I take one mile at a time, and I take one corner at a time. Every signpost, I'm looking at it and, and reaching out for that signpost. Every corner I'm reaching out, and this is the type of thing I'm thinking of when I'm running. The night before Terry's operation, um, you know, I visited Terry. Um, it was just him and me in, my, in his hospital room, and all I could think of saying to Terry at the time was, Terry, why do you have to have cancer? Why not me? Why not somebody else? Why you? When Terry's answer immediately was, why not me, Fred? I've been told all my life I'm not the biggest, I'm not the strongest, I'm not the fastest or the smartest. This is just another challenge I have to overcome. Terry's determination began to pay off. People began to take notice. When running through a town of 10,000 people, he raised $10,000, $1 for every person. He changed his goal of raising $1 million for cancer research to $24 million, $1 for every Canadian. So when Terry was in hospital, one of the nurses thought that it would be better for him um, to be placed in the children's ward. He was surrounded by kids who were suffering from cancer as well. Those are the faces that he never forgot. I'm crying now because I, there's somebody here right now who is going through the same thing that I went through. Exact same thing, and he's only 10 years old. And I, I had the most inspirational uh, day of my life today. At the time of Terry's diagnosis, his chance of survival was around 50%. Had Terry been diagnosed uh, a, a few short years earlier, he would have been faced with a 30 or 35% chance of survival. It was right there that Terry learned the importance of cancer research and raising money to find a cure for cancer. You know, sometimes I have to run in a lot of pain and I get pretty tired, but I don't feel any pain when I get support like this. So you're fabulous, man. Just like to thank you for that. The support kept growing. News media across Canada began to cover Terry Fox's Marathon of Hope with daily updates of where he was. From stadiums to city centres in the heart of Canada, thousands went out to meet him, and donations towards cancer research began to pour in. Terry wasn't running across Canada to become famous or to become rich. He wanted to make a difference in other people's lives. There was absolutely no question that this was some iconic event that was happening. Talking about cancer publicly was something that really wasn't done very much. He made it okay to talk about cancer. And that was the first most important step to then allow the rest of the population to do what needed to be done to start thinking of raising funds for cancer research. Researchers across Canada have devoted their lives to learning what cancer is and how to cure it. 
We have lots of cells in our body, and what happens with cancer cells is they forget to grow up. They just start dividing and dividing and making more and more of themselves and become a huge lump. And that lump, essentially, is cancer. Today, thousands of schools across Canada raise money for cancer research by participating in the Terry Fox Run. When I say Terry, you say <laughs> Terry! <laughs> Terry! <laughs> I'm a cancer survivor of the same cancer that Terry had, called osteosarcoma. My dad and I were about to go out fishing when he noticed one of my shoulder blades was visibly much larger than the other. That was the night that they told me that I had uh, a form of bone cancer in my right shoulder blade. Terry said that I remember promising myself if I should survive then I'll prove myself deserving of life. And that was something that I carried into my own journey. More money equals more research. More research equals more hope. There are so many other Canadians who are dealing with their own battles in cancer and that's why we need to fundraise to help those people. There were a couple of nights where I'd woken up feeling a uh, pain in my hip. My mom took me to the family doctor after school one day. They transferred us to sick kids where they found out that I had leukemia. One of the most common child cancers is called leukemia, which is a cancer of the white blood cells, the cells that fight infections. Around the time that I was born, only 2% of children with leukemia survived, and now over 90% did. I started to feel better uh, actually pretty soon. It was only like a year later that I started going back to hockey and running around. Terry had a dream of running from one end of Canada to the other. He took a long and winding route through the country and had run over 5,000 kilometers. He was just east of Thunder Bay, Ontario when things started to change. Terry knew earlier on that something was wrong. It was very rare for him to want to go and see a doctor. So when they stopped in Thunder Bay, everybody knew that something very serious was happening. I had noticed a little bit of hardness in breathing near the end of the day, 18 miles. Um, I was coughing and choking and had pain in my neck and my chest. And I did three more miles and I, had to, I decided I had to go see a doctor. And I was discovered then that uh, I had primary, originally I had primary cancer in my knee three and a half years ago. And uh, that the cancer had spread. And now I've got cancer in my lungs. And uh, we gotta go home and, tr and try and do some more treatment. But uh, all I can say is uh, if there's any way I can get up there again and finish it, I will. Terry had to stop the run and fly home to Vancouver to undergo more cancer treatment. At 22 years old, Terry became the youngest person ever to be awarded the Order of Canada, an award that recognizes outstanding achievement and dedication to the service of our country. Terry Fox's courage in embarking on the Marathon of Hope has won him the admiration and affection of Canadians from coast to coast. Nine months later, he would pass away in the hospital. I've said to people before that I'm going to do my very best to make it. I'm not going to give up, and that's true. But I might not make it, and if I don't make it, the Marathon of Hope better continue. Terry reached his goal of raising $24 million dollars in honor of his legacy, the Terry Fox Foundation was born with a mission to fundraise for cancer research to ultimately find a cure. What is the future looking like? Very bright, I would say. I know researchers are getting closer and closer every day to hopefully one day find that ultimate cure. 80% of the children that I treat are cured of cancer. And until this 80% becomes 100%, we will have not achieved what we need to. And that is what cancer research will help us accomplish.